Selecting a property management team to manage your investment is one of the most important decisions you will have to make. When you choose O'Brien Real Estate to manage your investment, you can rest easy knowing that you're dealing with the true professionals. The best managing agents are identified by track records, vacancy rates, commitment to the best returns, professional portfolio managers, access to tenants, and a huge office network. We understand that selecting the right renter for your property is essential. Our team will ensure your property is marketed correctly and suitable applicants are reference checked for proof of employment and income and previous rental history or ownership. Promotion and marketing of your property is also key and we will promote your property across the following channels. Agent promotion, video and digital media including 3D walkthroughs with Matterport, property promotion on all the major websites and print media. We have a large network of people ready to help you achieve the best rental price possible in the shortest amount of time with the very best of renters. At O'Brien Real Estate, we believe that real estate is all about relationships and working closely with our rental providers to achieve the best possible result. Respecting your situation is always our priority. All of our figures this quarter solidify the widening gap between supply and demand. The vacancy rates at an all-time low rental prices jumping significantly, and the number of leased properties across the network dropping considerably. Servicing the city of Casey and beyond, our team are here to help with offices in Berwick, Cranbourne, Nary Warren, and Wonturno. Uh, welcome to our end of financial year rental provider update. Today I'm joined with uh, Harry Turner from our Cranbourne office, which we've all seen before, and he's going to take us through what to expect at the end of the financial year, um, what you should be doing, what will make, look after you, and how it will work in the organisation. So, Harry, uh, thanks for taking the time out today. No worries. Um, we've sent a lot of people out monthly reports, uh, consistently communicated over the last financial year, and, we, and we've had feedback that's been invaluable. But there's things that we should be doing at the end of the financial year and there's things that you and your team and, and the whole of O'Brien Network will look after. Do you want to take us through that? Yeah, so um, for us as a leadership team, we start looking at the end of financial year. This year it was about three months out because we started planning our last rental provider evening uh, to make sure that um, our clients were, were up to date with, with what's going on and what they need to do to prepare themselves because obviously preparation will provide you the best return at the end of the financial year. Um, so that's myself, uh, Isabel and Joanna. We, we put together the last rental provider evening and then we start working forward from then towards the financial year. So we're looking at making sure um, we're getting the invoices in for all the maintenance that's been done and get that paid so we can claim it this year, making sure that um, every, all the ducks are in a row so that our clients, yourselves, can claim as much as possible come that 1st of July. You talk about invoices uh, briefly there. Some of our landlords probably have have actually put out their invoices to themselves might be collecting it. What if they brought them into you? Could you add them to their rental statements for them, get that out? So at the time of they need paying, yeah, if you provide them to us, we can pay everything through the rent and everything we pay through the rent um, can be on your end of financial year statement. Uh, but even if you want to pay them yourselves and you want us just to hold on to them for, for you, our client, then yes, we can just put them in the system at the end of financial year you can either log into your landlord portal or ask us and we can send everything back to you. Um, you said uh, briefly touch on the fact that we'll have uh, rental provider statements. When should they expect them? Uh, well, Isabel works hard on the 1st of July to get those out to our clients on the 1st of July. Sometimes there might be a hiccup and it might be a long day, but we'll do our very best to get them out on the 1st of July. Um, you can expect them via email as a PDF attachment or as you would have seen from our last evening, we have our landlord portal, our rental provider portal. We can log in and actually access your end of financial year statement. Every statement you get every time a renter pays us rent um, and, and everything you need for the end of financial year. You can even provide the access details for that to your accountant so they can just log in and grab everything for you, which makes life so much easier. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, these statements are sometimes hard to read. Um, um, that's been a common theme, but uh, you, can you just explain what we should do and it, how we can actually help anyone read it if they're not too sure? Great segue, Dean. Isabel's actually made a nice video for us because you're right, they, they can be hard to read, especially if you've 
this is your first time or you've never actually taken an active interest in what happens on the back end. So Isabel's made a great video for us to show us how to read our statements and, and what you can see on them, the ins and the outs. So um, take a look at this and hopefully it'll be really helpful. Now, Harry, we were here last time when we did our rental provider updates and what we like to often do, and I think uh, you've said this, this is a very much about feeding information to you guys. You spoke before, if there's anything that we um, should be covering or anything our clients should be covering, how, how can they get hold of you or Isabel or Joe or, or anyone in the O'Brien network to get that information out? Yes, yeah, so um, at the bottom of, for example, the email that comes up with the statements, it'll have contact details for myself or Isabel or Joe, or whoever the email comes from. Feel free to email back into us or email or call into the office. Our contact details are online or at the bottom of all the communication you get from your uh, property managers. And most of you will have your property manager's phone number or email anyway, just from communication throughout, uh, throughout the piece with us. So don't be scared, reach out and we will tailor our next one to, to what you want as our clients. So, Harry, thanks for that little update. Uh, so for anyone out there, don't forget, just reach out to our um, property managers in the organisation. They will help you on any topics that we, you need to or would like us to cover next time. But we're going to go to a video now that will assist you moving forward at the end of uh, the financial year. Hi, everyone. My name is Isabel Chan, and I'm the property management team leader at O'Brien Real Estate Berwick. I also complete our rental trust accounting at our Berwick, Narry Warren and Cranbourne offices. As we are fast approaching the end of financial year, I thought I would take the opportunity to help navigate through your end of financial year statement and provide information on our frequently asked questions. I will run end of financial year on the 1st of July and endeavour to have your end of financial year statement sent out to you via email on the same day so that you can provide this to your accountant. Should you require to find this at a later date, this will also be accessible via your Property Me Owners Portal. Our end of financial year statements are very simple to read and understand. At the top of the statement, you will see a breakdown of figures. The Money In section shows all the funds and rent that have been receded during the current financial year. The Money Out section shows any funds that have been deducted and paid from the rent. This includes maintenance, bills, rates notices, as well as any management or letting fees. The balance shows you all the rent that has been paid to you throughout the financial year, less the deductions from the money out section. Furthermore, underneath this section, you will find an additional breakdown of the total income broken down into subcategories to make it easier for you to understand. I hope that you have found this video useful. At O'Brien Real Estate, we are here to make tax time as smooth as possible for you. As always, should you have any questions or queries in relation to your end of financial year statement, I will be here to assist. At O'Brien Real Estate, with one of us, you get all of us. I'd like to thank Harry Turner for his information for the end of financial year and also Isabel for her informative video. But I've got now with me Bridget Daly from the Cranbourne office, Fabian, who's the director of the Narry Warren office, and Jason, who's actually the gen general manager from O'Brien Real Estate. As a collective, we're going to share some information on what you should do, um, what's happening in the marketplace, end of financial year, and really important about protecting your assets. So. Uh, Bridget, you're a fantastic uh, new business manager in our Cranbourne office, uh, certainly leading the pack in that. You've been doing it for how long now? Seven years. So after seven years, you probably find some trends that occur. Uh, what's some of the trends that are occurring at the moment? Yeah, it's a completely different marketplace to what we were working in seven to ten years ago. Um, the biggest trend I'm picking up on is the age of our rental providers. We've seen a huge shift and we keep this data every month. We track it. Uh, last month, over 50% of our owners were in the 35 to 50 year old age bracket, which is a huge change. It means that owners are, I guess, catching on to what they can do with their property, unlocking that equity and building their portfolios sooner. Um, and we spoke a little bit earlier before, as we got on screen, but a lot of these owners are now becoming multiple owners. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's because of that trend where owners have gotten into the market at the right age and they're building those portfolios quicker because as house prices have changed, they've got the equity to do so. A lot of people look outside of their local area for investment because everyone's also always looking for an opportunity. But uh, 
again, what are you finding? Where, where are our rent providers living? Yeah, we're finding the opposite. So we're finding a lot of our owners are staying within the local market, whether they've settled their family there or whether they're just upgrading to a larger home but in the same area. We are finding a lot of their properties are within a five to ten minute radius. Um, Fabian, I might hand over to you. You're, I've been a director and we've, been, we've worked together for over 17 years now and you've seen the area grow up. You grew up locally in, in the Cranbourne Turinan area and you, you reside there. Um, but we've also known there's been a lot of equity growth. Um, what would you suggest to a lot of people coming to the end of the financial year to make sure that their portfolio is in um, a good good particular way? Yeah, good question, Dean. Um, look, one of the most important things and uh, we as homeowners and landlords, we often forget is actually doing a, a sort of a health check on, on one, your investment property and also your principal place of residence. We've seen a lot of growth happen within the real estate market, especially within the last two years. Um, and it's also a great, great idea to contact obviously your local agent get an idea and an update of what's actually happening in the market and what equity you actually have within your property as well, because this could further help you investing in, a, in another property, um, whether it's within the local area, as Bridget touched on, that uh, you know, we are obviously investing in the local area. So. Typically, though, people only get their, their investment property um, reappraised. Yeah, that's true. So nine times out of ten, you'll talk to people and they'll go, I'm not thinking of selling. Um, but uh, when you obviously reach out to one of O'Brien real estate agents, we're all about uh, obviously uh, you know, giving you the full experience and giving you an update of where your actual home does sit. And so. I think you'd touch on the home. And so what I'm talking about there too as well is that the pr their investment property is one, but to have equity, they've got to know where their principal place of residency sits as well. That's correct. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, so when, um, when you reach out to one of the great O'Brien real estate agents that are here to help, Make sure you just don't get that investment property reassessed on where it sits in the market, but the principal place of residency. Uh, Jason, you as the general manager of O'Brien Real Estate are constantly giving us information so we can serve the customers a lot better. Um, for days like this that we actually talk about, you had a great session yesterday on what a depreciation schedule is all about. Um, for some people out there, they might not be too sure about it, but do you want to just summarise um, where that could sit and who we can go and, and get to help us out on that? Well, we recommend Mitchell Brantman, um, basically a quantity surveyor. So tax accountants actually aren't able to actually get the full unlocked depreciation in a home, okay? They're not actually qualified to do it. So using a quantity survey for $550 is the best investment you ever make. Um, also, you need to understand it's tax time now. There's a difference between also a repair and a replacement. So you just be mindful as an investor. If you actually are changing floor coverings, for instance, you don't change from carpet to tiles, because I'll consider that as an improvement, you won't get tax depreciation. There's we, a lot of different things to, uh, to understand, uh, but it's a, it's, it's a, from an investor point of view, the, you know, even if the home's 30 years old, you actually can get significant depreciation out of that home and actually uh, help cash flow. I actually think that's the biggest mistake a lot of people make. I've got, a whole, whole, I've got an old home, so it really, there's nothing left, but there's always something. And I'm sure for that $550 investment, um, it's going to well and truly pay it off. And it's tax, tax deductible in that, in, it, in that investment itself. I, so. I think yesterday it was a great example of a home we got <coughs> in our um, updated information session that it, it's as much as can be up to $100 to $150 per week. So it's a significant amount of money at mm. any given point in time. Um, but why I've got you, Jace, uh, you're an investor yourself, I know that, and um, I'm really appreciative of your time. But insurance at the moment, mm. it's a big thing, and we are, we are so fearful mm -hmm. at O'Brien Real Estate that a lot of people are underinsured. Mm. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Well, look, premiums are probably going up. Uh, everyone's getting renewal notices, 12, 15 odd percent. Um, I think actually having a, a broker, like we use rent cover, yep. uh, and they act as a broker. Because if you've got a long-term tenancy in place, for instance, that tenant who looks after that home has got social proof as such. Um, if you're having a conversation with insurer, the risk for them to actually have that, that tenant is far less uh, than someone else, okay? Also to the actual agent that you use to actually represent and, and manage that property should actually contribute to, you know, if, if they're a class agent with compliance, safety checks, all those things are getting done. You can say, I'm a great asset, I'm a great actual uh, investor to insure, because we do it the right way. There's a big, um, oh, the media at the moment, and it's unfortunate how building costs have gone up. 
So therefore, if anything should go wrong, and it's you, you, you touched before about getting a good broker for insurance and getting that opportunity, and we certainly can lead you in that right direction. But also with construction costs, uh, for the people that just often renew each year, but construction costs have gone up, haven't they? Yeah, well, there you go. You also need to obviously ensure that you actually aren't, yeah, if something does go wrong and you have to actually replace, um, you, you could be hundreds of thousands off in, in replacement costs. We, uh, I know for, for a fact, I've sent out with a lot of my friends and had this conversation and, and no one looks at it, unfortunately, and they, and they do it. But construction costs have gone up considerable, time to get constructions, loss of rent, etc. So insurance is a massive thing that people need to reinvest in and re-look. They should look at it every year. Typically they don't, but we've got. Uh, Bridget, one of the things when you're taking on new business, um, and it's really important that we do this, is that you send out a statement of disclosure that goes out and all the services that we do. Are people aware that we can actually help them in insurances, et cetera, or do they go off on their own? I think a lot of people are unaware until we tell them. The amount of owners that probably don't even know what level of insurance they need is quite concerning. So being able to give them that right advice and say, we can do it for you, it helps give us peace of mind as the agent that if something goes wrong down the track, our owner has the right cover. But then they've also got the reassurance that they've got the right advice to get the right level of cover. And as Harry touched before about, you know, if they want to send our invoices, we can pay that. We're a full service offering at O'Brien Real Estate, um, but a lot of people don't know that. No, a lot of people will still get their rates notices sent to their current home and then come tax time they're scrambling for things or they get little invoices for insurances or bits and pieces sent to them. We can get everything related to the property sent to us or they can send it directly to us and we can take it from the rent so it appears on that statement at the end of financial year and then it's claimable that nothing's been missed because every dollar does count. Yeah, Fabian, again, we've worked in the local area for a long period of time. You're a multiple investor yourself. Yeah. Um, where do you feel that uh, there's going to be a lot of noise about where the market's going, et cetera, like that? How do you feel about the market in our local area? Look, the local area that we serve, um, I see it actually, I've, look, over the next coming years, I think it'll st continue to stay strong. There may be, a, you know, a few little rocky roads that we need to get over, but uh, definitely within the local area that, we, uh, that I invest in, I've, I do feel that uh, it will stay, can, you know, will stay strong for years to come. So we just had a monthly review, Bridget, on the average rental <coughs> price. What, what was the outcome of that? Um, it was pretty surprising to see that just from one month to the next, our average price went up about $45 to $50 a week, which is a huge change because it normally went up $10 or $20 every 12 to 18 months. So it's a big shift in our local area. And we can't see it changing, can we? Because what's our application levels, et cetera, like that? Oh, absolutely not. We've had properties this week get between 20 to 30 properties in the space of a week. Um, so with the level of inquiry that we have and the number of people ringing up, chasing those applications, we know that there's demand in the market. Jase, you're an astute investor and you do the same. Um, you obviously live in the northern suburbs of Melbourne. Um, what's your opinion over that way? Well, I, I look at down, I look at it, it, the market is determined by demand and supply. So everything evolves around that. If you look at the nationally, the two capital cities that have done really well is Brisbane and Adelaide. And it's because they've got a, about a 25 to 40% uh, you know, uh, contraction of supply. So where there's less to choose from, so people are actually pushing the price up. In Melbourne, we're about 20% above the five year average, which is why the prices have been actually relatively suppressed. Uh, in their growth. There's only been 8% growth in the last 12 months. Those two other capital cities, we're talking 29 and almost 30% growth. So Melbourne actually isn't, uh, you know, it's not going to have a, lot, a drop because it actually hasn't had a lot of growth. So I think we're pretty good. And particularly if you live in an area where you're below the medium house price, you know, under 800, um, I can't see much going uh, south. Yeah, I think it's a great time and, and you know, so over the journey that I've seen, property has always been a great investment for all of us and for any of you rental providers out there, I'm sure you're the same. I think the main thing that we like to say to all the people that we serve and all our customers is that keep reaching out to, to anyone that associated with us, keep reaching out for here to support you and actually be part of your portfolio growth and be part, and we want to facilitate your growth in the property market. Got some amazing people that we work with, uh, Bridget, Fabian and Jason. Um, and all we want to do is make sure that you're clearly, um, clearly and precise informed with anything. And again, I did touch on it before with Harry. 
reach out to anyone and if you would like us to cover any content previously or any content that we've previously done again or anything moving forward we're here to help so to all you guys thank you so much to all our rental providers uh, thank you again have a great end of financial year hopefully the weather gets a little bit better um, but more importantly let's uh, look forward to a fantastic 2022 and a 2023 financial year thank you so much from all of us here at O'Brien Real Estate